switch to the second talk of the session. So we have Minky Han on the quantum complexity for discrete logarithms and integer factorization. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, uh, I will today give a merge, kind of merged version of a two lizard, uh, partly joined with uh, Aramiyun and Takashi Yamakawa. And yeah, I will talk about the generic quantum complexity of a discrete logarithm and integer factorization, but it's a little complicated. So I mainly focus on the discrete logarithm and probably on the, about the first paper. Okay, as I said, this talk is about the limitation of quantum generic algorithms, but yeah, probably it's better to start with just a limitation of a generic algorithm. Yeah, it's a kind of black box approach to the showing the lower bound. So in this model, we consider the generic algorithms where the, the and we want to study some ideal functionality of a hash function or group structure. So we just assume that ideal functionality are given as an oracle and algorithm only access them as a black box way or in a generic way. In this way, we can identify the kind of best possible hardness or best possible security of the hash function, some problem in group structure and so on. So for example, yeah, we already have uh, so many lizards in this kind of model. The first one is, uh, uh, for example, for the function inversion, we are given a uh, hash function. Then if we access them in a black box way to find a pre-image of some function, we require, uh, we need to query every domain, every input in the domain. And for the discrete logarithm, which we care, it turns out to require a square root of the size of the group for the secret group. And yeah, this is a well-known result. And heuristically, we believe that our best implementation of hash function looks like random or all idealized hash function. So yeah, it actually gives some evidence on the security. And it applies to the generic group, I mean, group structure as well for the elliptic curves. So, Limitation of quantum generic group, I mean, generic algorithms are pretty much the same. Yeah, we consider the generic quantum algorithms, which don't care about the specific implementation of the hash function, group structure, and so on, and only allow the black box quantum access to the oracle. This probably identified the best possible post quantum or quantum hardness of some relevant problems. And we already know many lizards about the function oracles or random oracles. For example, for the function inversion, global search obtain a quadratic speed up, which turns out to be optimal in the, the quantum random oracle model. And we already show the tight bound for the quantum collision finding. And we even know about the tight bound for the Simon's problem, which matches to the Simon's algorithm. So, but in this talk, we are talking about, not about the function oracle, we are talking about the group oracle and the discrete logarithm problem. This is the, yeah, everybody probably know the problem. We are given a secret group and generator and the problem instance g to the x and try to find x. In the classical setting, there is a so-called generic group model, which is a black box group. And in this model, we already know that the discrete logarithm requires a square root of the complexity to serve the discrete logarithm. But in the quantum case, Shores comes in and yeah, everything's are broken. Yeah, it's learning time is a polylog. And if we only count the number of a group operation, it's just a logarithm G. We will see it later more explicitly. And our lizards, it's kind of this. If we consider the generic quantum discrete algorithm, then Schwarz algorithm is kind of optimal. That's it. But, and yeah, we will talk about some recent progress later. So let's briefly talk about the implication. Yeah, there are some estimation about the Schwarz algorithm, especially for the elliptic curve discrete logarithm. And it says that it probably requires a one day assuming many, 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 many physical assumption. So our lizard roughly says that, okay, for attacking 
for breaking discrete algorithm much faster. Uh, probably it's impossible unless very, very new algorithm appears. So we have some confidence about our security estimation for the post quantum grid, I mean, pre quantum cryptography. So, unless we have a super large quantum computer, it's okay to use the discrete algorithm. Yeah, this kind of implications are much better when I unload the paper. But the problem is, like, if give an efficient quantum factoring algorithm, it's improved the Schwarz algorithm. But I said the Schwarz algorithm is optimal. It's a, just a one month later of uh, my paper. So I need to revise it. Yeah, I changed a lot of part of the paper because of this. Anyway, yeah, probably it's nice to see the brand new idea of Legev's algorithm. It's not on my contribution, but it's very simple. Yeah, Legev give a better factoring algorithm. And the brand new idea is just this kind of thing. Two times three is equal to six. It's easy. In the generic group model, we don't care about the group elements. I mean, every group operations are pretty much the same. But actually, if we are considering the circuit complexity, it's much easier than the other. So like we use this kind of thing many times to speed to obtain a better complexity. But in a sense, uh, like a algorithm also only use the group operation, link operation. So our result kind of applied to their result. So their number of group operation obey our low bound, but it happened to obtain a better complexity. So it's a kind of orthogonal. But, and if we only consider the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem, then there is no such this kind of easy group operation. So there is no leg variant. So it's OK. Anyway, yeah, this is comparison between leg and our lizard. So how to obtain our lizard? Yeah, we give the very brief idea about the proof. But before then, we need to introduce quantum generic group model. And before then, we need to introduce generic group model again. It's just a black box group model. We only access the group elements in a black box way. So given two group elements, we can submit it to the group oracle and obtain a group operation like a g to the i plus j or g to the i minus j. And we can check two group elements are equal or not by submitting them to the equality oracle. If we need to consider their quantum counterparts, then it probably works like this in the computational basis. But uh, actual model should be very much more complicated because there are many group elements and we probably can do the group operation in a proposition for the other elements. So, but yeah, I don't care about it. <laughs> we may be, it's okay to think about this one in this talk. So yeah, let's yeah, just so for example, let's think about Schwarz algorithm in the generic group model. Uh, we apply quantum free transformation and some group operation and inverse quantum free. Then it's a uh, group elements and we care about it. But yeah, there are some other things which do, we don't care. So it's what we care and yeah, it's we only care about this one. And to compute this one, we need to oper uh, apply many group operations. And it turns out the logarithm number suffice because of the this kind of binary representation. That's it. So Schwarz algorithm can be described in a quantum genetic group model. So how can you prove that this is optimal? Actually, the proof is also very simple. We just simulate the, any quantum generic group algorithm in the just a classical generic group model. But, and then after simulating the quantum algorithm in a classical generic group model, we just apply the classical lower bound. Uh, one caveat is uh, if we simulate the quantum algorithm in the classical generic group model, it may can operate quantum or unbounded time as long as every group operations are classical. And yeah, 
usually that kind of classical simulation incurs exponential blow up. So let's say it's true in this case, then two query group operation algorithm can be simulated by exponential number of classical group operation. And this should obey this lower bound. By taking logarithm, we have the wizard. That's it, it's uh, quite simple. And, oh, yeah. Uh, okay, the classical simulation goes like this. Yeah, it's a kind of variant of a uh, Lycon argument. You can, yeah, in the initial stage, algorithm only have a uh, identity group element, uh, generator and the problem instance. After applying one group operation, it only can see the identity G, Y, and G square, G, Y, Y square, yeah. And everything can be expressed by the G to the A, Y to the B, where A and B is small, like one or two or zero, minus one. And this argument can be extended to every query. So after Q query, we only need to see this kind of small number of group operation which is just an exponential number. So classical simulation just prepare this kind of elements using the exponential number of a group operation, then simulate the overall quantum state of the quantum general group algorithm. That's it. This is our proof. Yeah, we have some other proof, I mean, other lizard, but the proof lines goes very similarly. And as I, as I mentioned, there are two proofs. We have two papers. The second proof goes somewhat different way. And let's say algorithm by Alice and group oracle by Bob. And yeah, Bob prepared the problem instance. And Alice learns the algorithm. And whenever it needs a quantum group operation, it asks the group operation to Bob. And Bob do the group operation and send the kind of compressed laser to Alice. In some setting, it only requires a constant number of qubits. But after learning the algorithm, at least eventually learn the x out of g elements. It means, Bob, yeah, Bob eventually send x to at least, and it requires a logarithm number of qubit from Bob to at least. It's a very standard argument, but yeah, it's, it's a known lizard. And every group operation requires constant qubit. So it means at least need, I mean, Tom need to, I mean, well, at least need to make a logarithmic number of quantum group operation. This is the idea of the second proof. That's it. I believe it's both of them quite simple. Okay, let's talk about mode lizard. Actually, Schwarz algorithm can be a little speed up at the cost of some classical pre-processing, pre-computation. Like, uh, yeah, as I said, the G to the A, Y to the B requires the binary representation. But we can prepare the, I mean, we can use the base scale representation and prepare somewhat more elements. Then quantum operation can be reduced something like this, log G over log K. And yeah, in summary, yeah, at the cost of uh, many classical group operation, we can reduce the quantum group operation like this. And we also show that this is optimal. So yeah, we have uh, this research in the first paper. And in the second paper, we actually consider much more different problems. Like uh, we also consider the quantum genetic link model and talk about something about the order finding problem, which is the most important problem of Schwarz algorithm for factoring. We actually have something about Legev's algorithm, but it's too complicated, so I don't want to say it explicitly. And we also proved the quantum multiple discrete logarithm problem, which means a uh, problem instance is uh, not single, single one, but many things are given. And we proved that we proved the tight bound, which matches to our new algorithm in the first paper. And we also recover almost all generic group hardness 
I mean, for the generic problem in the classical setting and say something about the index calculus as well. Yeah. In summary, for the, yeah, let's come back to the generic group, quantum generic group model. We show that Schwarz algorithm is optimal for the discrete log. Uh, which means, uh, yeah, any quantum general group algorithm requires a logarithm number of quantum group operation. And yeah, if we allow the classical computation, it can be speed up, but we show that the tight bound. And actually we say something about the quantum random access memory as there. And if there is a no quantum random access memory, then this bound is optimal regardless of our classical pre-computation. Yeah, we show something about the depths or more hybrid algorithm, not just a classical quantum. We, we say something about classical quantum, classical quantum, but yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, I'm too fast. Yeah, there are some open problem. One is uh, our low bound is uh, something like uh, so multiple con constant is not optimal, like uh, one over two. But Schwarz algorithm, actually variant of Schwarz algorithm can be done only using the logarithm number of group operation. And I'm working on this with Morgi uh, and Yokjun. And I think the, in the quantum setting, black box group models are not that studied well. So I'm really curious about the, can we do something similar for the other problem like uh, Genetic group action discrete logarithm problem or non abelian is no group problem. And yeah, I'm really curious about yeah, if we can say anything about the like, variant, but yeah, it seems very tough. Thank you. It's is it? That's it. Questions? I have one question. So one thing I don't understand, because right, as far as I remember, Regev's algorithm, the complex is the same. It's just that they have a shallow circuit yeah. for the quantum part. So the number of queries that you need to the to the Oracle, like to the to this generic Oracle, yeah. the group model, yeah. it will be the same, no? Yes, yes, yes. So then what like what's the question then? Oh yeah. I uh, I want to consider the some modified model something like leg gap. Short, I mean, small group operation can be done much faster than the other group operation. Uh, more fine-grained model, what I want. Any more question? Um, yeah, I was wondering if you could go back to the slide that's uh... More results on the first paper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you said that this is um, the best we can hope for. Uh, I was wondering in what way. In what way? Yeah, like is it just like the um, like quantum group operations, or is it like like for example, could you uh, do you know that you cannot improve on like the QRAM usage on the second uh, row? Oh. Oh no, no, the top, top one. Oh, you mean if there is no QRM, can we do better? I mean, for example, could yeah. you um maintain like the group operations for the quantum and classical, uh, but use like less than k minus one qubits or something? Oh, actually, not. Yeah, I very quickly. Bad, but yeah, we showed that without large QRM, this is optimal. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. <laughs> if you don't have any more questions, let's thank Minke again. <laughs>